establish EC. Hi, EC Theory here. So I'm testing up a new camera setup, so hopefully it works. If you don't like it, put it into the comments down below, but we'll see what happens here. So I want to talk about trying to find the deepest node in a binary tree. So we got a little binary tree right here. And the node that I have circled in blue, that is the deepest node in this particular binary tree because this top is the root, this node is at level one, this node is also at level one, these are at level two, these three are at level three, these ones are at four, and then this one's the only one that's at five. So it may not be necessarily the unique deepest node, but we wanna find a node that is deepest in the, that, that has the deepest uh, distance from the root in the tree. Okay, so how do we actually find this thing? I'm gonna show you several different ways of doing it. One way is to say, okay, well, this node at the top, I know that it's the root, obviously. So what we can do is try to find the deepest node on the left side, deepest node on the right side, and then compare how deep they are in the tree and return whichever of, of them is the bigger of the two, the bigger depth. So the algorithm here would be, let's call it DN, deepest node of, of a binary tree, let's call it BT. So whenever you have a binary tree, usually you should appeal to a recursive algorithm, and that's what we're gonna do here. So the, you don't know anything about the structure of the tree other than the fact that it's binary. What are the base cases here, the smallest possible trees that you can deal with? Well, you can deal with an empty tree or a tree with exactly one node in it. Otherwise, we'll have children underneath under nodes and we'll have to deal with that. So if, uh, BT is none, which means that there, it, there are no nodes in this particular binary tree, then we need to return the depth of the node because we need to compare the left and right children later on in the, in the recursive cases. And we also need to return the node itself so that we can actually deal with it. Well, DN, well, what is that? That's returning the deepest node. So I need to return two things here return zero and none. And then what we'll do at the very end is that this will actually be a helper to the real algorithm so that when the real algorithm will call this guy with the root of the tree and then extract the right node at the right time. But here we need to return two parameters because the algorithm to figure out which of the nodes to, re to work with needs to know not only what the depth is, but also what the node is. The other case is if BT has no children, right? Which means that this is the only node in this particular binary tree. And so for that reason, its depth is one because that's the only node and it's the node. So I'm gonna return I'm gonna return one and BT itself, okay? So that's the node that I'm gonna return because it's the only node in the tree. And so therefore, uh, that's what we return. And then now in the recursive cases, what we need to do is to appeal to the left side, appeal to the right side, and figure out which one to return. So I'm gonna call left max, or the things that are gonna be returned are called left max, and the node left, I'm gonna call it node left, so this is what is gonna be returned to me, the depth of the biggest node, of the deepest node and the node itself. And I'm gonna to appeal to calling DN on BT's left. I don't care whether or not the, the left is actually a node or not, because if it actually isn't a node, this if statement at the top is gonna to help us out anyway. So we don't even need to put if checks of whether the left is none or whatever it is. It makes it really nice. And then we'll do exactly the same thing, but for the right side. So right max, that's gonna be calling dn bt right. And then now what we need to do at the very end is compare the maxes against each other. So if the left max is bigger than the right max, then that means that the left node, the node left here, is of deeper distance from this particular root than this node right. So I need to return the node left, which is gonna be this, um, I gotta return a tuple because dn is the helper function in this case. And so therefore I need to return the tuple. So return, and I'm just gonna shorthand it here, lm for left max and node left. I'll write it that way. 
And then otherwise, we just return the other guys. So we return uh, right max and node and node right. One additional thing that we need to do is we need to actually update what the actual values were. So according to ourselves right here, this left max is that distance from BT's left, but we, can, we need to know the distance from ourselves. So what we need to return here is not LM, it is LM plus one and that node because our cells are contributing one to the depth. And that's all that we need to do because we're assuming that the recursive call is making the right thing, is doing the right thing with figuring out what is the deepest node on its left side, uh, on its side, and what is the node itself, but we're contributing one to the depth, so we're gonna update one with the depth. And so that's the first algorithm for figuring out what is the deepest node in a binary tree. The only thing that we would need to update here is to have a little wrapper function, which will call dn on the real root of the tree instead of just some arbitrary node like this might be, and then extract what the second parameter is, because the second parameter is the actual node itself. The question here is not about what the depth actually is, it's just what the node actually is, which is all that we need. Uh, what is another algorithm that we can try? Well, let's look at this binary tree a little bit more. So we had this little recursive algorithm. Let's make a non-recursive version of the algorithm, but it's a different algorithm in a different sense. What we can do is we can apply breadth first search. So starting from this top node right here, I got to figure out what is the deepest node in this tree or any node of deepest distance in this tree. So let's look at all of these nodes right here that are of distance one from the root right here. These ones are of distance one. Well, look at the left node right here, this one right here. There are no children underneath it. And so therefore it should be removed consider from consideration because the second node has children underneath it and therefore must be of, of greater depth. And so what we can do is we can just run breadth first search from this node and we're gonna enqueue these two nodes right here. And we're gonna dequeue them one at a time based off of uh, what, at, in a certain particular order, however we order them, it doesn't actually matter here because the deepest node could be on either side. And then let's say we dequeue this guy first. Well, it's gonna be dequeued and we're gonna try to enqueue its children if it has children. So if it has children, which it doesn't, then we will enqueue them. So this guy, its reign is over <laughs> in some sense, whereas this one has children underneath it, and so its children are going to be enqueued into the queue. So we're doing what is called a level order traversal of the tree. We're going from the top down in level order instead of a different order of going through a binary tree, such as like in order or post order or whatever. So here we're gonna enqueue these two, and let's say we dequeue this guy first, then what we're gonna have is that, oh, maybe not maybe not red. So then we're gonna have these two on the frontier since we dequeued this guy first. So we dequeued this guy right here, which means that since we dequeued him, we must dequeue this guy next because it was the next guy in the queue. And so therefore we're gonna enqueue its children right here, which are these two. So the frontier, so to speak, is are those three nodes. And then however we added them, we're gonna process them in the order we added them to the queue. So like this guy right here, it was added first because we dequeued this guy first. So we're gonna enqueue this guy's children. So the frontier is gonna look kind of wonky. It's gonna look like that. So these four are on the frontier. These two were added before these two. So therefore we're gonna dequeue these guys first. And since neither of them have children, they're gonna be thrown away. So the frontier is going to look like these two. So those two are at the bottom. Well, well not quite at the bottom, I should say. And so therefore um, these two were added. This guy's children needs to be added to the queue. So we will have a frontier that looks like that. And so this guy is going to be dequeued because it's the next guy in the queue and it has no children, so nothing else is enqueued. So the frontier is looking like this. And so 
the important point here is that when we run Brett first search here, whatever the last node in the in the queue is, whatever the last node is, that's the one we return. Because the last node, since we're processing this in level order, whatever the last one is must have been at the bottom layer, whatever it is. Of course, there could be many nodes at the bottom layer. That's totally possible. But all that we need is to find one node at the bottom, and that's totally good. So what we can do is run breadth first search from the root and then return the last node enqueued. Whatever the last node that was enqueued into the queue, that's the one that we're going to return. And breadth first search runs in linear time in the size of the graph, a tree in this case, but it's, it's a graph because it's just a bunch of points, a bunch of vertices, and a bunch of edges connecting them. So this guy runs in linear time. What about this guy? Well, it has, it looks like two recursive calls, right? The important point is that this algorithm's runtime depends on the fact that this is a tree. And since a tree has no cycles, so like this node can't directly connect to that node uh, in, in one edge, for example, then these two calls right here have nothing in common with each other. So, so the, the two DN calls have absolutely nothing in common between them. And so therefore, every single node is only going to be looked at a constant number of times because we're only going down one side one time and then the other side one time. Now, it might be that we're going to do a bunch of computation, but the only thing that we're doing is we're like adding one and returning a tuple. So it's not really a whole bunch of work. So what is the cost of this recursive algorithm? It's also linear time, which is pretty dang cool. So these are two somewhat different approaches. One's recursive and one is completely iterative and, and relies on some other algorithm, but they both accomplish the problem of figuring out what the deepest node in a binary tree is. Why would you care about this? Well, if you have a tree, a binary tree that is pretty unbalanced, that has a lot of nodes on one side and one and not very and not very many on the other one, then what you would want to find out is what nodes are causing lookups to be slow. So, if we were looking up nodes in this tree, then this guy down here is the one that's slowest to look up because we got to start at the top and work our way down. So if we have an unbalanced tree, we may want to know what nodes are causing the imbalance to occur. So that's why this question is often asked in interviews, and it often leads to a very simple algorithm because if we just have a binary tree, we just independently do the work on both sides and then combine the solutions at the end. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments down below about anything related to binary trees and algorithms. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.